Hi, I'm Dr. Christina Dervetis. Welcome back to my channel, Talking IUC with Dr. D. Uh, I'm a gynecologist in Newmarket, Ontario, Canada, who um, has put together this channel related to contraception and answering questions about intrauterine contraception. So in today's video, I'm actually responding to a uh, viewer request. Viewer Caitlin asked if I would comment on the phenomenon of online reviews about um, IUDs uh, and just the fact that there seems to be a bit of a disproportionate representation of IUD experience out there on the internet. Um, that is to say that there seems to be a lot of negative reviews, but what about all of the millions of women out there who are having positive experiences with the IUD and aren't necessarily there online, blogging, blogging, posting, what have you. Um, and this sort of phenomenon can be a bit frustrating for um, a patient or a woman who's out there trying to sort through all the information and decide what contraception to choose. Um, so I thought as a title for today's video, uh, we're basically talking about online IUD reviews and rants and an approach to uh, wading through those reviews and some key theories to keep in mind. So as a general principle, I would also, um, you know, want to acknowledge that everyone out there has a right to their voice um, and that's great. That's one of the most amazing things about platforms like this. Um, everyone has a right to their voice and their opinion. Everyone has a unique experience. Um, and this isn't to take away from, from that um, concept, but um, really when you're reading someone's very passionate dialogue about what happened to me and this ruined my life, to give an extreme example or so on, it can be difficult to sort through and decide, does that mean that that same thing is gonna happen to me or did that person's experience for sure happen because of their IUD or whatever had happened in that circumstance? So um, I'm basically, you know, and there's lots of quotes, horror stories out there about phenomenon that people are very, very vocal about and they've even coined terms like the marina crash, which as a marina expert, I don't know what that is. I'd never heard that phenomena before. Um, comments about copper toxicity with the copper IUD. Again, as an IUD expert, I've not read anything um, in the medical literature to support this theory, the theory of being able to become toxic um, with copper in your system due to the small amount of copper that's present in an IUD. Um, but the way that these reviews are written, it's sort of as though this is um, indisputable fact. And so a few concepts to keep in mind while we're going through um, someone's, on, if you come across an online review. Um, so three topics or three uh, uh, concepts to keep in mind as we're approaching these reviews. We want to have perspective. We want to think about the rules of causation and how do we establish causation um, in, in medical science um, or in science in general. Um, and then we also want to have compassion and remember that there are real people that are behind the writing of these reviews. So um, going to point one, which is perspective. As the viewer pointed out, as Caitlin, when she was dialoguing with me online, pointed out that, you know what, it seems to me that they're, the people that have the negative experiences are online, but that the many, many women who are enjoying their experience with their IUD, enjoying worry-free contraception in some situations, enjoying nicer periods or no period at all in uh, the case of some women using the hormonal IUD, those women that are happy with their IUDs aren't necessarily online blogging about it. So that we need to keep that perspective in mind. Um, some examples would be, for example, the patient who goes online and tells her story of getting pregnant while um, having an IUD in place. And so we do know that no form of contraception is 
perfect other than abstinence and every form of contraception including tubal ligation vasectomy what have you um, each method has a potential failure rate so the um, overall failure rate for the hormonal IUD is around two per thousand and for the uh, copper IUD six to eight per thousand so a less than one percent chance of pregnancy so there are going to be um, you know instances where someone does report getting pregnant with an IUD in place or despite having ha uh, having an IUD in place so for those two women for example that are online telling their stories there could be 998 other women um, who ha have enjoyed very very effective contraception and did not get pregnant and are not online talking about it so we have to keep those sorts of numbers uh, in mind i would say the same for the very very rare complication of uterine perforation with um, iud use the rate of that is about one per thousand and we do hear those stories online but for every one per thousand that that happens there are 999 women who did not have that complication um, and aren't necessarily reporting online that that's the case so we really do need to keep the numbers in perspective when we're um, when we're interpreting these sorts of reviews now the second general theme that i wanted to talk about is causation and how do we establish whether or not something uh, has actually caused a certain outcome and that it's not just a, a coincidence that x happened and then after that y happened how do we know that x caused y or that y just coincidentally happened after the fact um, so to use an IUD example, if I have an IUD inserted on Tuesday and I sprain my ankle on Wednesday, how do we prove that the IUD caused the ankle sprain and wasn't just a coincidental event after the fact? So as scientists and as um, statisticians um, who help interpret scientific data to come to these conclusions, one of the commonest set of criteria that is used to establish causation um, is something called Hill's criteria. So um, Austin Bradford Hill was a British medical statistician um, and he developed these sort of list of rules for helping us decide whether X caused why so the first rule is strength the stronger the association between x and y um, the more likely it is to be a causal association um, the second um, criteria would be consistency so if we study these same um, events in different studies in different settings um, if we replicate the same study does it consistently yield the same results um, Point three is specificity, and that's when a single specific cause produces a specific effect. Um, criteria four um, is temporality. This is actually the only mandatory criteria of all of these um, criteria, but temporality, i.e. X must happen in time before Y if we are going to associate uh, a causal relationship. Um, Criteria five is biological gradient, or also known as the dose response uh, curve. So that if there's a stronger exposure, if we have more of X, uh, does it cause more of Y? Um, so again, or if it was a medication you're using, does a higher dose of the medication cause a higher, um, a higher uh, incidence of the side effect or whatever we're studying? Um, six criteria six is plausibility um, and that has to do with does the concept of what we're thinking about x causing y is that consistent or plausible rather um, when it comes to already existing understandings of pathological processes um, number seven criteria seven similarly is coherence which again is the idea of X causing Y, is it generally compatible with um, existing theory, scientific theory and knowledge? Um, 
Criteria eight is, are we able to create an experimental design where we can actually study formally the effect of um, X as it pertains to causing Y? Um, and then uh, point nine or criteria nine uh, is analogy, that if you think about X causing Y in a similar situation, um, if there was another similar X or a similar Y, would it make sense uh, as well to attribute that same sort of causal relationship? Um, so again, so those are, those are some of the criteria that scientists, uh, physicians and scientists in general um, apply uh, in order to look at two things that have happened in time, whether it be you know, a medication, sometimes it's a surgical procedure, sometimes it's um, a, a pill or another type of medicine, but some sort of intervention and trying to decide, did what happened next actually, was it caused by this intervention or is that just sort of a coincidence in time that's unrelated to the actual intervention? So sorry for that little mini le lecture, but I think it's important for us to keep um, keep that in mind because when I talk about, you know, scientific studies have not shown, consistently shown weight gain, for example, with the hormonal IUD, those are the sorts of criteria that those studies are looking at um, in terms of trying to decide uh, whether or not there is a true causal association. So. Um, so when I'm mentioning scientific studies, these are the sorts of criteria that we're looking at when we're, we're analyzing those scientific studies to, to say, do we believe these results or not? And then my last point that I wanted to keep in mind in terms of interpreting um, some of these online comments is that we do need to keep in mind that these are actual people on the other end writing this and whether or not what is being written is absolutely factual in terms of did the IUD cause these problems that this um, patient is troubled by. Um, these are actual real people and we do have to approach this somewhat with, with compassion um, and understand that they're writing from a place where they've had a negative experience that's had a dramatic impact on their life and they're writing out there online, not necessarily to try and mislead people or deprive them of, you know, contraception or to sway them against a contraception that might be actually very good for them. Um, they're writing because they themselves believe strongly that X caused Y, that this IUD caused their problems or whatever the, the exposure may be. And they're wanting to put their voice out there to potentially help other women. Of course, the downside is that if what they're reporting is reporting is not actually proven to be causally associ associated, then their review might dissuade someone from a contraceptive option that might actually be a very good choice for them. Um, but keeping in mind that that, of course, is not the intention of um, these people that are out there, that they're really just in a place where they're hurting or they've had a negative experience and they want to share that experience um, with the online community. Um, so I, I, I'm always keeping that in mind. I personally, um, you know, have not online um, chosen to, you know, review by review get into any sort of discussion or back and forth with um, patients in this situation simply because also I'm not their physician. I don't know necessarily all the details of their situation. Every patient is unique. Um, and basically for all of those reasons, um, you know, I think we can read these reviews and and approach them with these criteria in mind and have a better overall perspective um, when we're, we're trying to make decisions um, about our own health, our own um, situation. Everyone is unique and what someone else's situation may have been might not be what your situation is with a particular treatment or contraceptive option and so on. So that is my 
those are my words of <laughs> words of wisdom, my my um, approach, my um, commentary about the issue of uh, online reviews and rants and quotes horror stories about IUDs. Um, make sure that you keep all of this into perspective. Make sure you remember that we do have actually scientific criteria to establish causation and make sure that we um, keep in mind that these are human beings out there and that we want to be compassionate and no one likes to hear about someone having a, a, a negative experience no matter what the cause. So, um, so that's it for today's video. I'll end as I always do by saying that in less than the time it took you to watch this video, you could have had an IUD inserted. The whole thing takes less than five minutes and provides up to five years of worry-free contraception. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.